This is Nick Nielsen, Mad Scientist of Muscle, and what I've got for you today here is a review of the M1 rack from a company called RipFit. Now, this is a Smith Machine rack, basically designed kind of in a moderate price range, something that's more accessible to everybody who maybe can't afford the, the higher end rack, but doesn't want to go super cheap as well. Now, what this is, is essentially a multifunction rack with a Smith Machine setup here. So you can do free weight stuff, you can also do Smith machine stuff. You can also use handles to do cable work. So this kind of combines everything into one package, like a multi-station gym, obviously. Now, what I'm going to do here is kind of give you my general overview of what this machine is all about and what this setup is all about, the quality, etc. Uh, some of the benefits, the features that I really like about this machine, and some of the things that I think could be improved about this here as well. So let's get started. Now, before I get into some of the benefits and the features of the uh, attachments on here, I just do want to say this is a very solidly constructed piece of equipment. Um, I didn't find anything that I think was going to be a hazard or dangerous. Everything is actually, you know, really rock solid. Is this going to shift around a little bit? Every rack does. That's not any sort of big deal at all. It's, however, built to be stable, and I found it to be a very stable piece of equipment, which I do like and it's something I do look for in a rack. Now, overall, I do think this is a good rack. I think it's got a lot of good features to it. And I think the price is right in terms of something that you could use at home in a, a relatively small space, like a garage or a basement, and really get a lot out of it and be able to do pretty much any good exercise you can think of. Um, you can work back, legs, chest, shoulders, pretty much anything here. Now, what I wanna do here, like I said, is go through kind of the individual features of this rack so you can see really what it's all about. Now. The biggest feature that I find here and the biggest useful thing that really stood out to me here is the Smith machine. This is an attachment that uh, I don't have access to a Smith machine normally, so I really look forward to testing this out and uh, coming up with alternative ways to use a Smith machine, obviously, because that's what I do. Now, <clears throat> this functions exactly like any other Smith machine I've ever used in my 30 plus years of training. It's a very good um, Smith machine. Some of them are taller than others. Like for example, you're not going to be able to do a standing shoulder press to full lockout. You're going to need to do a seated shoulder press or a kneeling shoulder press. Not a big deal. You can absolutely do that. If they were to make this a tall Smith machine, you probably couldn't fit it in your basement anyways. I know I couldn't. So that's not a problem at all. <clears throat> the peg spacing on here, absolutely consistent with every other Smith machine I've ever tried. Um, what I like about this too is it's a very easy to set these stoppers. You know, it literally takes you two seconds to do and having these spring-loaded stoppers means you can operate the Smith machine in complete safety. Now, these hooks. The only thing you can't really do here is a really super wide training. You're basically limited by how far uh, you can set your hands on here. Not a big deal. There's not really any exercise that I found that I really need to go any wider than what was already on here. So, bar is nice and thick. It's a good quality piece of Smith Machine equipment. Now, other than the Smith Machine, which I talked about, the next two biggest features on here are the two pulleys. Now. These function independently of each other, completely independently of each other. You can set them down, you can raise them up. What you will need to do before you move these all the way up and down, however, and this is pretty obvious, is take these bits out. This, once they're out, allows you to kind of unscrew the handle, slide it up and slide it down, so you can go from a very low position all the way to a very high position. Now, once you get these, you'll see that these are each numbered, so you'll be able to basically gauge where you want to set this to make sure that these two pulleys are even. Now, one of the things you'll find with this dual pulley system is that if you wanted to do an exercise where you're using both of these pulleys at the same time, for example, if you're doing a standing press, you're doing a shoulder press, uh, doing a row, anything that you're doing with two pulleys at the same time, you need to load these two basically plate loaded carriages separately. So you will need plates to fill up here, plates to fill up over here. So 
versus a system that has, say, one weight stack or one plate loaded thing in the middle, which some racks do. This with the two separate stacks has its advantages, meaning that you can load it heavier, but it also means that you're going to need to put double the plates on here. Now, I loaded these pulleys up. They say the limit is 275 pounds. I'll show you here that I've done that. I've loaded up 275 pounds on here, done seated rows. For me, it ends up being a good weight. It's not nearly a maximal weight, but it's a good, decent weight. If you're using this more for recreational purposes and you're not kind of like a super, super strong elite lifter, that's gonna be plenty. It's going to give you enough resistance to be able to do pretty much any exercise you wanna do with a pulley from a seated row to a pull down, cable curl, the works. Now, these handles that come with it are, are your basic plastic handles, nothing crazy about them, but this pulley setup allows you to go up, it allows you to go down, straight forward, it turns basically 180 degrees, which I like that capability because you can stand in the side, you can stand in the middle, and you're gonna get a direct line of pull the pulley action on here is really nice and smooth. They've done a nice job with the setup on here. You can literally also, you know, because of how this is basically leveraged, this extends really far out. So this gives you like literally 10 feet of pulley here if you want 10 feet of pulley for any of the exercises you're doing. I didn't find that to be necessary. Now, what I did find on here and this is something that could potentially need some work, is that these carriages have basically the plate things. I'll, I'll do a close-up on here so you can see. And here's what I'm talking about. These are basically sleeves that sit over top of another small post in here. So the smaller post is for standard size barbell plates, and this bigger sleeve is for Olympic size barbell plates. What I've found is that these little... Um, screws that go in here, they kind of bulge out a little bit and you can't quite slide the plates all the way in. So not necessarily a big deal unless you're really looking to max out how many plates you fit on here. And um, you know, if you're using big thick bumper plates, that could be an issue. If you're using regular metal plates, not really an issue. What I did find, however, is this is more of a quality control issue you will need to potentially put some collars on here because as this goes up, the second plate starts sliding off. It becomes basically a self-unloading machine. You can see how that's sliding kind of off on its own. That, to me, is more of a quality control issue. You know, the concept of having a plate-loaded machine means you want the plates to stay on. So, if you use this, you will need just stick a collar on there, problem solved. So it's not a huge deal, but it is something that uh, could stand to be improved for this. But uh, just overall, I did find <coughs> that the quality of this carriage right here, um, very excellent. Um, it's a nice smooth bearing on here, and I didn't find any um, issues with the thing catching on the, uh, the post at all here. Now, what you can also do here when you're doing the, the setup is use this little screw here to adjust the height. So when I first set it up, it was basically like a, about a centimeter off of the rubber stoppers at the bottom here. So by adjusting the screws, I managed to get it right down, sitting flat when it's done. So there are some tricks to this as far as the setup goes to make sure that you're getting the optimal um, setup and positioning. So this is what the pulley system looks like and overall I like it. I think it's a very functional, a very useful and very effective pulley system that they got set up here. Now one thing I did find when the setup, uh, when I was starting to put everything together, the instructions weren't always super clear. So when I put the feet on I actually had them switched but I didn't realize it until I was part way through the setup and I think it was either a labeling issue or it was an issue uh, with the instructions because I thought I had it correct started putting things together and turns out it wasn't. So these holes right here need to be lined up so that you actually have two holes here, two holes here. I had that flipped around so that the holes were basically forward and you gotta make sure that those are towards the back. As well, 
this wasn't specified in the instructions, but this back post here, I had it turned 180 degrees so that these storage posts were actually facing inward, like the holes for these were facing inward. You want to make sure that the bigger parts of those are facing out towards the back so that you get those right. Now, pretty minor. It you know took me just a few minutes to correct the issues once I realized what the issues were. Not a big deal. However, what really kind of bugged me about these storage posts? Normal sized bumper plates, 45 pound, you know, regular sized bumper plates. These posts, one set here, <clears throat> this is going to limit you. You're not going to be able to store bumper plates here based on the settings of these posts. This post here should be at least another, at least three to four inches lower, ideally, so that you could fit, you know, as many plates as you want. You're gonna, if you want to store plates, you want to have all the same plates on here. This doesn't really allow you to do that. Now, you get the same issue as here as you do on these posts. You can't actually push these all the way back into the end, so you can't maximize your storage. If you're using just the regular skinny posts for the standard plates, that's going to be fine. But you're using these Olympic size plates, which keep these things from shifting around too much. You've got about an inch gap here, which I'll zoom in on, that you can't actually push the plates far enough in to get full maximum storage on these. All right, so now let's move on to the J hooks and the spotter arms. These are the things basically where you're going to hook the bar on, and these are the things where you're going to basically use as safety rails. So they call it a power cage. This is not a power cage, I'll tell you right up front. A power cage means that you have something here and a rail that goes all the way across. In this particular setup, it is a rack, but it's not a power cage because you don't have anything going all the way across. So you can't do like full free weight stuff with full spotting safety inside the rack. All of your stuff is going to be done outside the rack in terms of barbell free weight stuff. There really is not any room to do any free weight stuff inside this rack. So know that going up front. Um, if you're comfortable doing stuff outside the rack, like you will need to do squats freestanding essentially. These spotter arms, they're about a foot long. To have full safety, you would actually want to be inside a power rack. Not a huge deal if you're not using tremendously heavy weights. If you're using super heavy weights, that is a consideration and something you will need to be aware of in that, you know, you could set this up for squats here and stand fairly close in. If you needed to uh, ditch the bar, you'd have to ditch it forward rather than normally what you find people doing is ditching it backwards. So definitely a consideration. If you're doing bench press, and I'll show you this more closely here in a second, you will actually need to ditch the bar up towards your neck, which I'm not a fan of, but it will stop the bar from you know, crashing down on your neck. This is very solid. This is not going anywhere. Now, these hooks and these arms are very simple to use. This is a pretty standard setup you see on racks these days, where it's just a post, I'll give you a close-up on that, that slides in and then swings around. It's the same thing on this side. Slides in and swings around. Now, just like any other rack, I like stuff that's actually more secure. This is perfectly functional, but it's not secured around on here. So is it going to move? I highly doubt it, but you know, it is not secured down. So that's for me a personal preference. It's probably not going to be any sort of issue at all whatsoever, but I just want to make sure you know that. And honestly, I think a lot of racks are using this kind of style of racking system with the, the J-hooks that pop out. It does make it very quick and easy to change these. My other rack that I have, the one that I've used for 20 years, has a pop pin and a slider, kind of similar to this one that they're using with this, but for the racking system, this works just fine in terms of uh, what it's good for. But like I said, this is not a cage in that you're not doing free weight stuff inside the cage, you're doing free weight stuff outside the cage, but you do have these fairly decent spotter arms and a good set of J hooks here to catch the weight. All right, so the next thing I want to focus on here is the seated row foot plate. Now, 
It's not secured on, clearly, but I found it completely stable enough to set my feet on to do the exercise of seated cable, seated cable row. I don't have any issues with that being like that. I was able to do this exercise very effectively, essentially, with this. Now, what I did find is that, uh, and I think this is a really cool feature, you can set your feet here and you can change the angle of pull. Now, most seated cable rows, you have one low row, and that's what you've got. This because it's sitting here, you can actually slide this up and do a different angle row, so almost like halfway between a row and a pull down, which I thought was actually a really cool feature that you can do with this. The uh, attachments that they include here, this is a really solid V handle, comes with a rope, comes with basically a V bar as well. Uh, these are really well built, these aren't junk. Um, the pull down bar that it comes with, it's a little bit thin, but you know, it's a pretty straightforward pull down bar and uh, not something I would really be concerned about either. Now, you can also see what I've got laid out for you here is some extra cable attachments that RipFit does have available. These are an extra purchase, but um, in my opinion, they're definitely worth getting. They're uh, you know similar to other handles I've seen, but the quality is excellent on here. They're very solidly built. <clears throat> the stuff on here is great for doing pull downs. For example, you know, grip on here. <clears throat> Really nice piece of equipment. You have stuff for close-in stuff, cluff for overhand, reverse grip stuff. You got wider grip. I really like what they've done with that. Like I said, it's not included with this, but I do want to mention that they do have it available. All right, now it comes to doing pull-downs, you're gonna to have to be aware of some limitations that due to the height of this machine, you're gonna have when doing pull-downs. So probably what you're gonna find here, depending on your height, I'm up five foot 10, is you're not gonna be able to get a super full stretch on here. So if you're doing this from a kneeling position, that's going to basically stop you right here. You can do a kneeling pull down and get a decent range of motion, but it's not going to be a full range of motion. In order to really get a full range of motion, you will need to sit completely on the floor. And you know you can set your feet on here, kind of changes the angle back, <clears throat> or you can sit right underneath here and do a pull down like that, which is fine. However, if you start using heavier weights, something that is going to basically be, you know, heavier than your body weight is able to hold down, you don't really have anything to hold your body down here. There's no knee pads. There's no anything that you can wedge on top of yourself to keep your body down. So you will be limited in the amount of weight you can use when doing a seated, like an actual seated pull down kind of movement. But uh, that being said, <coughs> it is a fully functional kind of pull down setup. Like I said, it will depend on your height, it will depend on your weight, it will depend on your strength level, how useful that fully is for you. All right, so this rack also has a set of multi-positional chin-up and pull-up handles. So you've got this front bar, which you can be pronated or supinated. It's got the V bar here, it's got neutral grip. Now, gives you lots of options. I would potentially, me personally, like to have more of a neutral close grip available. Not a big deal. You can certainly do fairly well with a white grip like that, or you can do supinated. This is almost like a neutral, you know, depending on which way you're facing. So not a huge break, deal breaker or anything like that. It is nice having the various positions available. The only uh, kind of issue I have is the positioning here. So you can see right now I've got the Smith machine bar right here. If I'm doing just regular chin-ups, not a big deal here at all, it doesn't get in the way at all. If I'm doing kind of this neutral grip, still pretty good. That bar is like right in your face. The only thing you can do to change that is set that all the way down, all the way down. Gets it out of the way. However, now it's in kind of the way of your feet a little bit. So, you know, not a huge deal. Again, there's a lot of things with this rack that I really like. A lot of these kind of things that could be improved are just kind of minor inconveniences. Nothing I think that should be a deal breaker. Um, you know, it's a Smith machine, it's gotta go somewhere. So being right there, it's not the end of the world. All right, so now let's move on to the dip handles that are included with the machine here. Now, I'll be quite honest, I hate these things. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Now, the first reason is and th this reason is not a big deal. This is a storage rack on here. This 
basically allows you to set these things out of the way. The only problem is if you take these dip handles and do them here, they're not necessarily out of the way. So if you're doing an exercise with the pulley, boom, that can, that's going to hit that handle here. So, you know, something to be aware of, not a big deal. You move this over, you know, just slightly store it out there, and then suddenly you've got full clearance. I have no problem at all doing that. What I do have an issue with is how this sits. So let me move this out of the way. Gonna attach that on here. Nothing wrong with that. Gonna attach that on here. Make sure we got them even. Now, the distance from here to here, way too far for dipping handles. Like, ridiculously too far. Like, I can't even do dips on these dipping handles because they're too far apart. It puts my arms at an angle like that, and that puts massive tension and massive torque on the shoulder joints. Not great for the elbows either because it's kind of, it's going to twist your arms a little bit. So don't actually do dips on the included dipping handles because literally they are too far apart. It's not going to feel good on your shoulders. You can absolutely do stuff like uh, inverted rows. You can do neutral grip pull-ups on here, you know, starting from basically this position. You can do bend your knees and do kind of a neutral grip between the thing pull-ups. You can do, you know, inverted rows like so. Works great for that. But in terms of dips, forget it. What they could do very differently is actually just make these a little bit longer, fixing the problem instantaneously. If these were in about three inches on either side, that would put the handles in right here. Suddenly you got perfectly functional dipping handles. So this is one of my big pet peeves with this machine. And like I said, it's not a huge deal. Only if you really want to do dips, is this going to become a big deal. And uh, you know, it could be potentially easily fixed by the manufacturer. I will be letting them know that, you know, just change that dimension a little bit, move that out here, extend it out, and you're gonna have much more functional dipping handles that people will actually want to use because right now the spacing is just too far apart. But in terms of use, you know, there are things you can do with these other than dips, uh, such as like I said, the inverted rows or the pull-ups. Right, so another good feature to this machine is the landmine attachment. Now, this works great as a landmine with some caveats. Now, you basically pop it in here, you pin it in here, it's solid and it uh, plugs right into the machine. The only problem that I found here is this works great, just like so in that plane of movement, which is primarily what you want in a landmine. What it doesn't do, however, is go this way and that way. So, you know, you can rotate it around like that, but you don't need that. You actually, for full functionality, you want this to go that way and you want it to go that way so you actually get a lot more freedom of movement. So this allows you to go up and down, no problem at all. What I did find too is that if I was using just the T-bar row attachment, for example, which is this, which comes with the machine, and I'll show this with an actual barbell, you have this set here. If you just have it set on the floor, this will fall over. And all of a sudden, you don't have vertical movement anymore. You've got kind of a sideways hitch. What I did, put a couple of bumper plates on the floor to keep that stabilized, keep that upright. And that allowed me to use the uh, landmine as it's supposed to be used. The only problem with not having that functionality I mean, I should say the additional problem with not having that functionality is that you can only really use this landmine in that direction or that direction. So if your room that you're using in is small and you have to put this fairly close to the wall, you're not going to be able to use it, extend a seven foot bar that way. You'll probably just be able to use it that way, which maybe that's all you need. But ideally, if you're doing landmine stuff, I do like to have some space available and be able to move it in pretty much any direction I want which you're not going to have that functionality with this specific attachment. All right, so now that I've gone through all the features of this rack, I kind of want to sum everything up. Now, overall, I think this is a good rack. 
I think you're going to be able to do pretty much anything you want to do here as long as you're not looking for an elite level, you know, super high quality power rack. This is a good quality power rack. You can do a lot of different things with it. Um, one of the main things that you'll notice, this is not a cage in that you don't have safety rails that go all the way across, so you won't be doing any free weight stuff inside the rack. It's all going to be done outside the rack, and they do have attachments that will allow you to do that. So that's one thing you really do want to be aware of. The Smith Machine attachment that's on here, great functionality, works just as good as any full-on commercial Smith Machine that I've ever tried in any gym that I've ever been to. So, you know, no problems there. Definitely happy with that. Um, the overall functionality of this piece of equipment is good, especially for the price point. Um, just over $1,000 at the time I'm doing this, I think $1,099 at the time I'm doing this review. Um, it does have, have additional attachments that you can get. The ones that it comes with are solidly built and very good quality. Um, I don't think you're going to have to worry about uh, getting additional attachments unless you really want to kind of expand your horizons with that. But uh, overall, the cables work great. The cables are nice and smooth. The Smith machine works great. Nice and smooth. It does have some minor design flaws that I think most likely won't affect your ability to train on this rack. The biggest one I found was the dip handles. If you're not going to do dips, not even a concern. But generally speaking, overall, this is a good rack. And for the price point, I think it has good value. And it's well constructed. A little bit tricky to put together in some ways sometimes, but as long as you pay attention to the orientation of the holes and the orientation of the parts, you're going to be just fine. So bottom line, I like this rack, and I think it does have good quality, especially for the price point that it's being offered at.